Welcome learners to the NIO studio. I am Dr. Priya and I am going to teach you today accounting ratios. I al already have taught you solvency ratios and liquidity ratios in the first part of accounting ratios. Broadly speaking, accounting ratios are classified into two categories, liquidity and solvency which we have done and the next two categories are activity ratios and profitability ratios. Profitability ratios are the ratios which tell us about the overall efficiency of the operations of a firm. They tell us about the profitability of the firm in regard to its operation. If there is a decline compared to the previous years, we make corrections. We make corrections timely so that we do not suffer losses. For that we do not incur heavy cost of production. The important profitability ratios which we are going to discuss today are cross profit ratio, net profit ratio and operating profit ratio. Return on investment ratio is also a profitability ratio which we will discuss later on. Now operating profit ratio as the very name goes it is based on operating profits which means your COGS cost of goods sold is deducted from revenue from operations which is nothing but your sales and sales minus your cost of goods sold becomes your gross profit and from gross profit if you deduct your operating expenses it becomes your operating profit. So operating profit upon revenue from operations on net sales into 100 will give you your operating profit ratio. As you see that this ratio will tell us what are the what is the revenue left after meeting your operating expenses to be distributed as dividends or kept as reserves or to meet your non operating expenses. Higher the ratio better it is. It helps to control our operating expenses if they exceed if the, if the operating profit ratio is showing a declining percentage we need to control our operating expenses even though if the gross profit is rising and the operating profit ratio is decreasing. Gross profit ratio as I have already told you it is a gross profit margin which tells us the percentage of gross profit per 100 rupees of sales done by a firm. It is calculated from your revenue of operations minus COGS or cost of goods sold and that multiplied by 100 will give you a rate which will tell you the percentage the amount of gross profit per rupees 100 of sales. So therefore I will say that cost of sales is equal to opening stock plus purchases plus direct labor plus other direct expenses minus closing stock and that becomes your cost of sales. So cost of sales is deducted from revenue from operations and it is divided by your net sales. Net sales here means sales minus sales returns. Now we were speaking about gross profit ratio. Gross profit ratio as I said is a margin which tells us how much of gross profit we have made per 100 rupees of sales which is gross profit upon sales and gross profit upon sales multiplied by 100 will give you exactly the gross profit in rate terms and the higher the ratio the better it is. It means that the cost of goods sold is kept under control and that is why the revenue from operations is able to yield a higher gross profit. So we need to keep this in mind while comparing gross profit of one year with the other year. And we always must see that this is on an increasing trend as we increase our sales and keep our cost of productions on as well as the cost of goods sold to the minimum and thereby keep on increasing gross profit. Therefore, we are talking of effectiveness of our operations, we are talking of decline in cost of goods sold over the years as we increase the production, as we increase the amount of sales done by us as a firm year by year and therefore this is showing the trend of trading results. Next we come to net profit ratio. Net profit ratio is different from your operating profit ratio students. It is not the same. Net profit ratio can be calculated from net profit before tax and it can also be calculated from net profit after tax. You can calculate it both ways 
But remember, from your operating profit, you have to deduct your non-operating expenses like loss by fire, any gain by sale of investment that has to be added and then only you get your net profit before tax. And from net profit before tax, whatever is the percentage of your tax, please deduct that before you arrive at net profit after tax. If you are wanting to calculate net profit after tax ratio, net as net profit ratio, please use net profit after tax upon net sales. And I repeat, net sales will be always your gross sales minus your sales return. Okay, now let us talk about the calculations as with an example, I am going to illustrate this to you. Gross profit ratio, net profit ratio, operating profit ratio. Let us look at this example. This example shows that there has been a sales of 20 lakhs. There is a cost of goods sold which comprises of the opening stock. We have added back purchases. We have deducted the closing stock, added the direct labor expenses that is wages and also the carriage inward, the transportation charges for bringing in those purchases. And we have deducted all this from sales to arrive at a gross profit of 9 lakh. Now if you go further onto this slide, you see that the gross profit is 9 lakhs but the operating profit is only 7 lakhs which means we have to deduct our operating expenses. Operating expenses are all your office and administrative expenses and your selling and distribution expenses. Office and administrative expenses are incurred to support your sales and selling and distribution expenses are made to deliver the goods to the final customer or to the retail shops. So they have to be incurred and of course you will deduct your bad debts and therefore all these expenses known as operating expenses when deducted from gross profit will give you a result of operating profit which will be only 7 lakhs. Now look at the calculation of net profit. Net profit is calculated from operating profit which means Operating profit 7 lakhs minus non-operating expenses which means interest on long term loans which you are giving. I am not saying short term loans. Remember learners, it is interest on long term loans. It is assets which are lost by fire. They have to be deducted. If there is a furniture, machinery which is lost by fire, please deduct that amount add interest on long term investment because it is a gain, it is a gain for you, add back profit on sale of long term investment shares, debentures and you arrive at net profit before tax. From net, before, net profit before tax which is coming to 5,80,000 we deduct tax which is 50 percent. So, we deduct 2 lakhs 90,000 and we get 2,90,000 as net profit after tax. Now look at this solution students. Gross profit is therefore your gross profit 9 lakhs upon your revenue from operations which is 20 lakhs which gives you a 45% gross profit which means after your sales you are spending out of that 20 lakhs money on your cost of goods sold and out of that you are gaining a 45 percent of margin on your gross profit. Whereas in the case of operating profit it is only 35 percent which means this difference between 45 percent and 35 percent that 10 percent has gone towards your operating expenses. Now if you go to your net profit after tax which means I have taken into consideration 50 percent of tax which makes my net profit after tax at 2,90,000. 
I have arrived at a result of 14.5 percent, which is the only amount left for my distribution of dividends and retaining as reserves for various purposes of the firm, which means that a lot of money has gone into the amount spent on cost of goods sold, the operating expenses and the non-operating expenses, which means, which means that the firm needs to cut down on the operating expenses, on the non-operating expenses as well as to build up its efficiency and profitability by streaming, streamlining its cost of goods sold, which can be streamlined by having better suppliers of raw materials, maybe cutting down, down on the cost of production and the cost of goods sold and thereby building up a higher gross profit margin, operating profit margin and a net profit margin so that ultimately the profitability of the firm goes up. Remember learners, the firm operates with the motive of profit. So it is very, very essential that we work with the motive of profit with the aim to increase the efficiency of the firm year to year. It means a comparison of the profitability of the firm yearly basis on an yearly basis with the firm itself or intra firm or within the industry with other firms by comparison the profitability averages with other companies operating in the same industry. Gross profit ratio therefore is coming for this particular illustration as 45% operating profit 35 percent, the net profit before tax is coming at 29 percent, whereas net profit after tax is further decreased and it is coming to 14.5 percent because we need to pay the taxes also before we start thinking of distribution of our net profit to our proprietors as dividend or to keep it as reserve for various purposes of the firm. So, learners, today we have learned about profitability ratios and we have found out that if we in continue to increase revenue from operations, our aim should also to be cutting down on the operating expenses, on the cost of goods sold, on the non-operating expenses, so as to grow our gross profit ratios, operating profit ratios, net profit after tax net profit before tax because we have to build up our profits per rupee 100 sales which we conduct, which we undertake in the market for a firm because the whole purpose of business is profitability and efficiency of operations to build up a capital corpus for the promoters, for the proprietors so that we can expand, amalgamate, merge in future because business is meant to grow in dynamic conditions. We need to grow our capital and our earnings over the years and therefore profitability ratios are a very important ratio to analyze financial statements and financial statements can only be better understood if we have these ratios calculated for our management, for our internal users as well as external users. All stakeholders of the firm have got eyes on the profitability of the firm because all funding, all creditors, all bankers, all financial institutions and the board of directors are looking at these key figures, key indicators to look for in the end of the year to find out what should be the policy prescriptions for the future? Should they embark on a policy of market expansion? Should they go in for a change in the product line, a change in the market, market distributors or in the change in the suppliers or creditors for better profitability? So profitability ratios we have learned today, learners how to calculate. In the next part, we will be talking about the activity or turnover ratios which will be 
telling us about the efficiency of the operations of the various assets in the utilize in their utilization to earn profits are we using our assets current assets our fixed assets in a most profitable optimum manner so as to increase our utilization so that we are building up our firm by the utilization of working capital learners so today we have learned about profitability ratios in the last session i had taught you about liquidity ratios we have spoken of solvency ratios so we now know that liquidity ratios help us to know the short term solvency the solvency ratio also tell us about how the firm is able to meet its short term obligations and its long term obligations or liabilities and profitability ratios have now taught us how to measure the operation effectiveness of a firm so in short we are prepared to learn about the next series of ratios which is the equity ratios and therefore students and learners we are now going to have part 3 of financial ratios or accounting ratios and we will continue to learn equity ratios in the next session thank you